hold that advantage and push your your extra advantage when your timings are right. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's the only reason why why I have a feeling the Fnatic could attempt this. But we're inside the game now, so we'll roll ourselves out. Yeah, smoke. Uh, smoke straight away. Where's our ring? We've got no ring of Basilius. This is not a level one Roshan. Yeah, he he did pick up the smoke. So, uh, yeah, passing on the wards over yeah. to come with me. Look, look at yeah. the line they're drawing. They're looking for a gank inside the radiant jungle here. That's the that's their goal right now. How how ironic, eh? Like when when Navi first started, this is like how the map looks every single game. Navi versus another team, except Navi is the one that's moving as five. And you know what? The smoke happens too. So no Roche, but they will go for the wraparound because they assume that they've placed the trap with the Ursa and the Wraith King pick, which they sort of have. But look at look Kavost, at Bost. He, he's not. He's not afraid. He walks in. He plants down the observer ward, but he doesn't check. He came pretty close to him as well. Now the observer ward would go down, so his scouts out of Vorst, and they know they're not going for a come with me. Hellfire blast. He can't take into a Vorst because he'll blink and then disjoin it. But he gave it a shot Thank anyway. So they both use their abilities. Matters. That yeah. at least that, reveals that the fact that mana burst not leveled up from the start. Yeah, if Avos actually waited for the animation of the Hellfire Blast to come out first, he would have missed the blink and he would have died to a follow-up arrow. So that was really nice that he just blinked as soon as he kind of realized from his screen, probably. So come with me, he's going to block up one of the camps in best case. Just puts the sentry ward inside the tree line, so this uh, little heavy camp is not available. But they don't block anything else up, just the one observe ward watching begins. the bottom rune area. Gold for me. And what do we actually get? So Ty gets the bounty. And it's a haste rune on the bottom. Ooh, that's, that's a nice for a ganking duel. Perfect for someone like come with me. Maybe yeah. you're not always able to get yourself in range. If you can bait out that blink from Hulforst as well, you got a guaranteed Hellfire Blast into an arrow then. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do want to point out something I really like here. Ever since the Kraken Shell and the Anchor Smash changes, the Titanters have been skipping a lot of Stealth Shield in the early game. I really like what, what Funic is doing here because even though it doesn't stack, the early levels, whether you have that stealth shield or not, makes the difference in certain matchups of whether you can get zoned out or not completely. And in this matchup, it's pretty good to have against Hani overall because he does so much physical damage from the start. Mm -hmm. So again, I really enjoyed the pickup here and I would imagine he picks up the boots right after. Let's actually uh, just give ourselves some bearing series. I realize we haven't really gone through our lanes. So up on top lane, there's going to be Hani as the Ursa Warrior going up against a Tide as well as SK lane with Funnick as an FNG playing up those roles. Dendi is the mid solo Death Prophet up against Arise who's taking the solo mid Razor. And S is just babysitting as a Sky Wrath Mage. Looks like he's uh, coming down to, to search for the stacks, but they do not exist. Currently not a single point of experience to his name. And a voice is, a voice is the man getting completely zoned out on the bottom lane. He knows he can't stay close up against Ace's Jakiro, because Liquid Fire is going to burn every bit of his life away, and come on me and Rise are currently actually being watched by the Observer Ward. So they know where where they are, but it's definitely giving a Vorst really pause to actually come into this lane, because he knows if he comes in close, he's just going to get burnt down and potentially yes. control the arrow. Oh, the he arrow. even connects. Perfect. That's a good five seconds done. So Ace, we have a lot of time to attack into him. That's the Ice Path. Very late on the Ice Path. Surprised that she didn't level up Dual Breath, but. He tried to give it a crack anyway, but a force takes damage and has to use his south. Yeah, so it was a really nice arrow, and they're pulling the creep wave away. Even even pulling the creeps for the enemy, kind of just to sap the EXP from both things, the neutral and the creeps. And pushing the tower in the meantime. Um, I was going to say that it, so far things were favoring it. Navi, but Come With Me has finally rotated it out, and I think this is going to spell better for Fnatic, because Navi were winning actually two lanes, with the Skywrath presence at mid, and the Sand King presence at top lane, which forced Hani to not play too, too aggressive. Of course, it's Tide Hunter, so it's not easy to play aggressive against the Tide with a melee hero anyway. But, Hani, good awareness here. I'm, I'm even wondering, too, if, if this even matters in Hani's mind. Because Hani will still be sitting there going, okay, they're pulling, like, my bottom lane is still doing great jo a great job. Like, Jakira may not have all the farm in the world, sitting only 6 for 3, but that bottom tier 1 tower is already down to 384 life points. And they know they're going to take Roshan as well. So the early injection of money coming into this lineup of Fnatic is going to be really, really high. Which means getting early blink daggers, getting early mechs, are going to be easily afforded by Fnatic. So I'm, I'm, th yeah. I'm thinking at this time, Navi should be more concerned about this this uh, early timing coming in from the injection of money from the early objectives of Fnatic. If they can take them, of course. Mm -hmm. Rise was able to sap out three, three instances of the static link, and unfortunately for them, they actually missed the arrow coming out of Rise, but it was a pretty close one. But nevertheless, puts an, enough pressure on Dendi to realize that there's somebody camping him a mid, so he can't play too far up. Of course, it's a razor. You never really want to play too far up anyway. But speaking of playing too far up, 
this animage with his with his little mantle cloak cosmetic is actually sitting at very low life points hobo style playing super aggressive he really looks like a sith with that kind of like thing yeah he really does like it's, it's just like pimp my sith that's all i'm really <laughs> seeing right now with the vost that's a really weird set um fng is going to wave for harney to come in a little bit closer here Funnick's up to level 4 at the moment. I'm also surprised too that Funnick uh, decided... I suppose it's not really that surprised going up against Harney that he got the second point up in Kraken Shell. As opposed to going up for a point up in Gush. Uh, Funnick? Trouble? No, not oh, at all. Oh, is he gonna go down? No. Pretty close though. Got a lot of swipes on him. But the Tide's just trying to push the limit a little bit more. The power of Anchor Smash is only gonna get you so far up against that Ursa. Yeah, but you know what? Honey's actually running out of mana. If you don't have mana in this matchup, chances are eventually you're going to fall off against the Anchor Smash oh, Rascal. Arise, trouble, fire strike. This should be first blood with a crit storm into the sandstorm. There's enough AoE damage. FNG, too much damage oh. on the tower. Then he couldn't take it off him. So Razor will get the money for the kill at least, but he will not claim the experience. But I think Denny is still 100% okay with this. They just managed to get a one for one trade off in the mid. Yeah, I think it's convenient for FNG as well, honestly. He hasn't been stacking the jungle, and now that he's able to reset both his mana going as well as his life points. Funnick, Hellfire Blast into the arrow on a Funnick. He's still taking a lot of damage here into the Anchor Smash, but there is really not a lot to play around with. And actually, Ursa Warrior, even though they're on the side of Roshan, he's put three points up into the Earth Shock. He's looking for the extra damage control over that Tidehunter. Yeah. With that, of course, Navi aren't exactly aware of it, but this kind of commitment forces him to stay in the lane a little bit longer, just so he can get probably up to like level 8 or 9 before he wants to tackle Roche. Of course, it's not mandatory because he has the Wraith King, but that would require two heroes being off the map, and in the meantime, Arai is getting a little bit harassed up in the Yeah, he, he tried to be a little over-aggressive on Denny. Denny doesn't have his boots, so he can't keep up with Arai. Oh, the smoke. Uh, it's only going to pay off if Denny overseas is welcome here. He's trying to drive the creep wave down because he's not sure. And even then, FNG still got his Barrow Strike available. He sees Kami break on the smoke. The plasma field will connect on both of them. But Fnatic just cannot get themselves in range. That's that's a Death Prophet without boots, but still having 3 2 2 movement speed. LOL. Yep. You said it, man. 3 2 2. <laughs> the the, ma the, the magical number for a Death Prophet with, three, with a 3 0 3 build on Witchcraft. And no boots. But now the boots arrive, so it's up to 379. And this is a lot better for the Death Prophet, because if he had that before, he probably actually probably would have got himself killed. Because the, the way he was walking up this direction, Arise was walking to his teammates that were coming in. Yeah. And all, all Denny needed was two hits and one more Crypt Swarm. And he had that kill on the Razor. Same time, he might have actually fallen too if they were able to chain the stuns properly. So it's yeah. ironic how it works, but the lack of the boots in that situation might have helped him or saved him. Um, or or gotten him killed rather. Yeah. Avors finally has this ring of health. He burned. He actually flew in an extra salve down here on the bottom lane, so he had enough life points to stay close on Ace. But at the same time, I'm also looking at Jakira, who's about to crack level six six minutes in. So this is this is still a really good Jakira. All mm -hmm. he's got to do is TP towards the top lane. They take that tier one tower. Because are you really looking for a counter push coming out from Navi? Not so much a counter push. I mean, Dendi is up to level 7, and actually, uh, before we get into the talk about the extra system pushing, I think it's good to note that he's level 4 Crypt, Crypt Storm run right now, which used to be the level 3 Crypt Storm and level 4 Witchcraft at level 7. That was to maximize the efficiency coming out of the passive Witchcraft, but now with the scaling change on the Crypt Storm, he wants that 300 damage as soon as possible. So it's good to note that Patch has already had its implications in this game aside from the draft. But yeah, the counter push potential with the exorcism, it's it's certainly there, but not with the Razor's presence at the mid lane, not with his max plasma field. Got some interesting TPs coming out. Rise's TP to the bottom lane. We had come with me actually TP himself in towards the mid. It's because they've smoke moving. Alright, they're, they're smoke moving in the Wraith King as well as uh, the Ursa. Yeah. So they can check for that while on bottom lane. Ace is being initiated on. Rise's arrow was well off target, but the ice pass here from Ace. This will be a collateral kill over on NS. The Vorst uses to trying to shore the kill while Rise, he has a leap available. And a Vorst will blink up in these two attacks. There's one, there's two. So a double kill for a Vorst. An FNG? Is he going to check for the, He's here for the eight minute rune. He might actually have a look in. Yeah, he oh, is. He is. is. He has a look in, and he'll scout him out. Roshan's so low too. He can sit here inside the sandstorm because they have no detection. 
so he'll send the illusions in to attack into Hani. He got Denny making his way into Hani. He's already got the Aegis Sea Mortal in his hands. Barra Strike will go through too. Currently, he's going to drop no reincarnation to keep him alive. And Hani, there goes your Aegis blown already. But a right, he'll get the link over on Denny's phase boots. He's using it to run himself away and get him as far away from Hani as possible. Has his own set of phase boots. Supports coming in here from NS, but concussion shots already been used. The damage shown by a rise, only 112. The plasma field damage, not oh. enough to kill Dendi. 13 life points, and he gets away, so they burn the Aegis. Hani was still capable of bringing down Roshan, but he won't hold to that Aegis advantage, and he did lose the Wraith King for it. Yeah, and I think the biggest story is he's, his farm has been hindered because of all the engagements. Even though he's got pretty good CS and one kill as well as Roshan, he still doesn't have his plads because he opted to get the phase boots for the laning. And his farm is not really enhanced because he doesn't have his passive points either. And Earthshock is a fantastic spell, but it's not... Earth's management, mana management is not good enough to spam it everywhere he goes, so he can't farm that fast anyway. Overall, this game is still pretty in favor of Navi, I would have to say, just by the draft. They, yeah. They're content with sitting in their lanes, and as soon as this enemy gets levels, he doesn't even need the Battle Fury, because there's no real kill potential coming out of Fnatic that's not obvious against enemies right now, so Navi are in a really good place right now. Yeah. But I'm waiting to see what happens when this money comes in for Fnatic. They've been taking the T1 tower in the top lane now, and they should just rotate around with these three. Bring down every single tier 1 tower. This will allow them to fall into the Yule Scepter onto the Jakira, which means they have something up against the anti mage. And then you'll also get t potentially Blink Dagger onto the Ursa. So that'll give you something else to go up against the anti mage. Should also flag to the fact that Fnatic tried to, uh, was attempted to be ganked up on the top plane, but uh, Fnatic missed the timings on their stuns. They went, the, they actually threw out the, uh, the Wraith Fire Blast at the same time as they threw the Ice Path. So Funnick just TP'd himself straight out. They didn't chain oh. their stuns and, and keep it, so he knew he could just escape himself out with only those two heroes there. So a little bit of miscommunication, which I know probably is a bit of a pain in the ass for me to flag it for, against Fnatic, but it did cost them a kill over on the Tidehunter, or at least a potential kill. Yeah, that is quite unfortunate. I, I would imagine they would have had an easier time with that tower even against Dendi if they did have the kill come to pass. But speaking of Funic, you know, he's hit level 8 at 10 minutes, which is already really good. And the Ancient Stack, there's 4 stacks, or rather 3 stacks there that's available for him, and I imagine he's going to go to that next. And once he finishes that, he's going to have his Blink Dagger for the next engagement, and that's really big. I'll just give him a moment, man, with the T1 tower going down the middle lane. That's the first use of Denny's Exorcism, and they took a tower uncontested. No one from Fnatic wanted to try and even have a crack at them. The Ace did bring down the T1 tower in the bottom lane, so it's all about trade-offs right now. And you're still getting that good farm coming into the Jakiro. He is, however, walking around with a Sage's Mask, so I know I said, like, a quick Yule Scepter into him, but because I'm not seeing the mech over on Arise, I'm wondering if Fnatic are actually considering going no mech in this game. It could just be a casual Sage's Mask, because he has the two Ironwood branches in there, so it's possible he'll still build the mech. But it'll be pretty risky for Fnatic not to go to a mech lineup in this game. Actually, it's uh, it's weird for me to put it this way, but hold that thought. Come with me, it's yeah. about to fall at the top lane. That's gonna that's actually gonna trigger his reincarnation, but Hardy puts the blink tag to work. Oh, the blink. NS does not survive long. Into the phase boots, he's gonna slow in two seconds time against Dendi. Dendi's got his phase boots off cooldown in one second time, but Hardy, blink. Two seconds, one Radiant second, he'll have to go into the tower for this one. Dendi, oh, he jumped inside the tree line! Then Hani won't have enough time to attack him, he used the Fog of War Radiant to escape out of that one. The mid tier one tower is being brought by down by Ace as well, and Arise starts static link, it's a blink away! Well, FOG got caught in the ice, in the ice path. Fallen. But that's now all tier one towers lost. Arise gonna get sealed up, Avorce, FNG, he can't get himself in range for the stun. And if he did actually go for that, he would have copped an arrow to the face. <laughs> so it's really nice the Fnatic were able to take out all the tier 1 towers thus far. 12 minutes into the game, that's some good surge of gold and I guess pretty decent map control. Now that Hani's shown his blink, it's even more map control because I guess Navi heroes have to generally watch out for that. But again, like the Sand King had unhindered farm ever since like the 3 minute mark since he moved around after getting that Razor kill. So yeah. he's ha he has his blink dagger now. Even a Volt, and he's 100 gold away from his Battle Fury. Yeah, even that too. Like, this is all still really, really good for Navi. And if Fnatic lose the next engagement, things are going to just be in the rough constantly from that point on. So they have to be careful where they next pick their next fight. And I see Arise now, he has the Invis rune and is able to scout out a lot of targets. But overall, they, they need to push the issue with a pickoff. And right now, Navi's positioning doesn't allow for that pickup to come in very easily. Yeah. In fact, Navi's positioning would allow for, for an easy counter kank. Because mm -hmm. with a Blink Dagger over on a Sand King, you can have that Epicenter thrown into the middle of the team fight when Fnatic are least expecting it. But Fnatic will just try and five-man force the top. 
They just go for the towers. There isn't a dire observer caught up, so they can watch the rotations of here as like like the Tide Hunter. The arrow will come oh, in. Oh, the arrow. Just a little bit off target. So they, they would have to dive underneath the tower with no creep wave in order to really make that worth it. But yeah. you notice what Denny is doing instantly. He just goes up towards the top lane. He has exorcism available. But the Tide strikes the creep wave off. The, the liquid fire is going to directly attack into the tower anyway. So either they take the full team fight here in the mid. Um, or they TP themselves in after Fnatic try and extend themselves to kill off the Tide Hunter on the top. Like, that's the only two scenarios here for Fnatic. And both of them, I don't see them really ending too well for him. Oh man, funny. That was a that was a pretty ballsy play there. He just blinked in towards the Chikiro, assuming that there was nobody that's in proximity to either save him or kill the Tide Hunter right away. And as they say that, Dendi gets a pick off that mid. Yeah, that was what quick. The heck? That was Epicenter being committed for that one too. Yeah, no Skyrath ult he needed for that either. Yeah, pretty fast kill on Honey. I'd actually Again. assume too the Skywrath cracked his level six by being there. So he Oh yes, yes, you're right. You're he, right. he probably didn't have it. The top tier two tower is completely toast. The fortification will try and protect it. Ravage from Funny with the anchor smash into a follow up hit. He'll bring down Ace. The tier two tower actually survived through the liquid fire. FNG, there's no mana for a forest strike, so even if he catches up to Rise, he won't be able to keep up with him completely. The arcane boost one second off cooldown for Funic. So he can trigger it, which does give him the gush of Babel. Honey, blink, and then just jumps in. And maybe now B Field are gone a little bit too far up on that lane. The boss gets stunned up, and there's actually oh, a lot of damage. The They'll kill him. The arrow follow up. Yeah. Held him in position. And Denny yeah, wasn't ready was... for this. He just used his ultimate on the top on the bottom lane, and he hasn't taken the tower yet. Still fine though, because there's no tier 2 objective at top anymore. The only thing Fnatic can really do now that their mid lane is pushed in and they don't have the force to push it out again, is kind of just respawn to bottom lane. And that's that's just really good forcing of map movement coming out of Dendi. Even though he lost two teammates, any mage and Tyrant will just resume farming the top lane and probably the jungle. Because Fnatic, they just don't have the map control to push the issue any further. Yeah. And again, Honey, like he's he's been doing a lot of work this game. For his heroes and for his draft, it's... It's an incredible amount of work, no doubt, but they need to apply more pressure. They need to warden the enemy jungle right now. They need to stop this AM from just getting free farm any everywhere he goes, because this blink movement is not stopping unless Havos makes like a really ballsy dive like he did just now. But for now, I think all Havos wants to do is finish up his treads, which currently he's still another five, uh, 500 gold away from doing so. So he also needs space. Is Denny now, looks like he's going to build into a BKB. Starting off with the Mithril Hammer instead. A little bit surprising on yeah. that one. You think you just... Yeah, I never see that, eh? Not on the DP. You never you never see that on DP most of the time. Like, if, if you had, like, another hero, like, for example, a Razor, where you just wanted to just slightly increase the damage output, like, that I can understand, but you don't really think of DP as a right clicker. Yeah, Even and, and you know what? In this game, in this game, you see the Mithril Hammer is actually the last pickup. Or has actually picked up the recipe before that, thinking that he's, he might possibly die or lose his gold or something. Yeah. Well, Avorst and Dendi, they're taking out this top tower. They've got support behind them with FNG and NS hanging around. And there's, there's no there's no one coming from Fnatic. Tower so this tier 1 tower belongs to them. And we take him by the anti-mage. And that'll be his Battle Fury bottom lane. There's going to be your eyes path, NS with the concussion shot, just trying to slow down Ace, the virus right from FNG will still connect, but FNG needs a sandstorm and hide away from a rise, the static link will still remain here, and is there another eyes path? One second, and now it's going to bring FNG out of this eye, out of the sandstorm, your virus right back up, need two, but Harney, right in the mark, blinks him for the clap. So they're able to pick off two heroes in the bottom lane, the SK as well as the Skyrath Mage, well up on top lane of Vorsa Solo pushing a tier 2 tower. So, again, looks like Na'Vi not looking to fight. Radiance and Fnatic fighting and taking map control attack. through the towers now. But they have to give the pressure up. Yeah, I'm not too sure about that. I think even though they're down on, on the manpower, I think Na'Vi are still looking to take the engagement. Fnatic is nicely positioned to counter gank any sort of real dive. And I think Fnatic are actually realizing that and sensing the urgency of stopping this AM. So, Hardy blinks forward, but is unable to chase the blinking anti-mage. And the push will be subdued for the moment. Roshan's up. He only just spawned. And, oh, uh, you know what? He just TP top two, so it's not a good timing. Uh, Ryan scouted that though. With face boost and a blink dagger, it won't take you too long to get down there. But he also doesn't want no. to show, like, just disappear from the top lane when it's so close to his tier two tower. Because if Honey yeah. does that, it's going to flag so heavily to Navi that Fnatic is aware that Roshan is up. Yeah, that's a good point. And I think another thing to watch out for is that Navi have this really nice ward placed 
to the entrance of the Dara jungle. If Honey makes his way right through that, then it's going to become blatantly obvious. Yeah. But he won't know about that. And his path, no, he wouldn't. His that path is still going to lead him down this direction. Well, so, he actually has no mana, so I, I would assume he wants to hit the fountain before he goes. And it looks like you're right. In fact, he'll blink away from the ward, go back into base, and then come out again. Yeah, that hero is so, so mana intensive. It's it's ridiculous. But a very strong hero, though. Good right quicker. You notice through the way he tried to build into it? Because you still need to have some level of mana regeneration, so he went for the Ring of Radiant's Aquila instead. Like, it's a nice cost-efficient item, but he didn't need the Vlads in this yeah. game. Yeah, with the Wraith King's presence, he definitely doesn't need it. But what that forces him to do is it locks the Wraith King to kind of follow him all the Navi. time. And I, I, I'm not so sure about this voice. I thought for a moment uh, against that. I don't know. I think Navi actually have the edge here. They have the more blink initiators and they have the bigger AOEs. Again, better fighters overall. So I think Fnatic are the ones that need to be careful. And they're close to Roshan, but they're not going in. I think they've also realized who the Navi is here. Like yeah. they, they had the Dire Observe, what, but Navi was smoked up. They didn't have perfect vision of it. Hmm. I, I think we also forgot to point out the come with me's item build. We end up having coming up on him. Ahead He's going for the blade mill next, but yeah, he has a Midas and Treads already. He wants to transition to some sort of a carry waking. I'm I'm still okay with this one. I think Fnatic yeah. realized too, like their late game potential is okay. Um and the fact that Navi wanna wait for late game. Yeah. If if you really think about it. With a core Wraith King in your lineup, or at least a, a Wraith King which is able to pump out the damage and so have ability that you want from a core Wraith King, that may just give you what you're searching for to fight in like the plus 45 minute games, which this yeah, game yeah. can easily go towards. Yeah, I think um, they really want this to have a fighting chance, honestly. Um, the main idea is to survive against the enemy until that point. Because if you can hinder an enemy just farm, what you have to do is you have to hinder his push at the very least. least. And his push with a mana style is very, very fast. Not only that, but he offers a lot of solo kill potential. So most of the time you need two heroes defending him against him. The problem with Wraith King is even though he's such a fantastic core, he is mana reliant too. In a sense that you can't have it all burned away. And of course, enemy specializes in burning that mana. So Dendi. even Wraith King can't Come defend alone. Sends him up in towards the air. It's going to be Denny's Yule step to doing that. And then a Vorse jumps in. The Blade Mail has already been triggered. And the Moonlight Shadow from Fnatic. They drop the Sentry Ward in case anyone from Fnatic wants to try and re-engage in. But no one from Fnatic wants a bar of it. In fact, they're bailing out of here. They're going to let the tier 2 tower drop on the top, and they're going to get Roshan in trade. It's going to be the only reason <laughs> well, they, they did smoke, so they're going for it, but as attack. you said, the tier 2 tower going down, and if Navi realized this, they might be able to push high ground fast enough. Ooh, Dendi they're committing exorcism to a half HP tier 2. I'm pretty sure they want to push in a bit deeper. Mm -hmm. Well, they just scouted out the fact of what's going on, because Fnatic started to battle up against Roshan outside the pit, so when he clapped like that, it would have been visible. Now, they're taking a long time, Fnatic here. Denny's ulti is still going to slike another third duration left on it, and they'll damage into the tier 3 tower. Ice part and as well as oh, Mind Spiel gets rid of a lot of the life points of the creep wave, but the tower still drops by one third of its life points, and they did manage to pick up Roshan. Not 100% sure if Fnatic will want to say that's a full win. It'll probably very like de like depends so much uh, on how well that Aegis will help him in the next engagement. Yeah. Again, one of the issues with this game is that even though Fnatic want to force an engagement with Aegis, they they don't have too much catch in their lineup. So if Navi just stay on the back foot and play elusive, what's going to happen is that Aegis timer will run out eventually, and they won't make too much use of it. So, in the end, it is somewhat of a trade between the Tier 2 Dire and Funic. the Roshan, which is fairly common. Fire Blast, Arise, he doesn't have a line for an arrow because the Centaurs came in from the side. And, uh, well, FNG, he, has a he could actually prep the Epicenter at the moment. He Bara strikes down, then blinks himself up. There she goes, Scepter. He'll evade the arrow. And Fnatic, they kind of lost track of who they want to initiate on. On well, the middle lane, looks like Dendi. Well, the Macropy has also gone out here. Is that burning down a Vos? Yes, it was. You check yeah. him out, he's only sitting at like 90 life points. Yeah, that, that would have been a huge kill on Hobos. That would have given the momentum for, for them to abuse the Aegis and go straight down middle, even though even though Tyrant are still at ulti up, because they realize the Death Prophet ulti is probably down. Would have given them a lot of room to maneuver, even just even if it's just farming the enemy jungle. And again, a slight opportunity lost, but it was a close kill nevertheless, and I personally didn't expect that to happen that way. So for now, Fnatic, they're still keeping it at bay, even though FNG <laughs> being as much of a nuisance as possible. The Plastal Field's going to do a little bit of chip damage, but not enough to bring him out. And again, we see Fnatic here with no detection. They're just a blink into the tree line and then escape away to safety. 
I'm also wondering what this Doomling is doing just sitting here. While Harney, Phonic. Okay, that's uh, someone needs to get Diffuser Blade up against this Tide Hunter. <laughs> So that's, yeah. another, that's another hero, like, again, Tyrant using that Ghost Sipper to escape out of the Ursus clutches. While on bottom lane, there's a Heal Sipper from Ace, but in comes a Vort, he dodges the Ice Party, so got a Mana Void available now. Denny using his own Heal Scepter, in for a follow of Silence, but the uh, Moonlight Shadow allows Sekiro to escape out of here. How long is it going to yeah. be before both these teams start buying gems? Probably not long. Uh, Hani on the lookout, of course he's gonna exit the enemy jungle now, realizing that he's too far deep alone. It's one of those situations where if he loses Aegis there, he might have just died again for a second time. In the meantime, FNG is doing the thing at, same thing at top again, and without detection, Fnatic can't really respond. But I have to say, this is really just one of those lineups that, even if they did have detection, unless they have two or more heroes, some of these heroes on the side of Na'Vi just won't fall. Like, for these heroes to perish, they need to have abilities to lock them down aside from just stuns and initiations, yeah. they need to be able to push out the waves as well and anticipate where Navi heroes are coming Ace. from. Him. They found Dandy, but NS, perfect timing. He got the seal on Ace, so there was no fall up. And then with the Mystic Flare and the orb attack, Ace should die from this one. The orb will connect. While Dandy's triggered the ulti off, and Hani realizes it's not the greatest place he wants to be. The BKB does not protect him from that ultimate of the Death Prophet. Now come with me. The BKB comes off cooldown for Denny. He used the Fog of War into the tree lines. He's still got a Crypt Swarm available. And Hani, he can see him moving over from the side. Hani's still got this Aegis the Immortal. If Denny turned just then, he would have actually killed off Hani, but it would have only taken the Aegis, hence no turn. And now Hani's considering a jump on towards the middle lane. Havos, it, the jump comes out from, from uh, Come With Me instead. The Vorsal will be able to blink himself away to say that they have the Ravage for, uh, for assistance if they need it. But they won't get it. So Fnatic lose two heroes, both the Razor and the Jakira going down. Razor dying inside uh, the river, in fact, near mid lane. And the Jakira on the bottom lane. Yeah, that was really close on Havos again. Um, even though Honey was really low, he was completely okay with the potential death. I think if he had Blink Dagger, he would have definitely gone in for that enemy mage kill. But uh, because he blinked towards the Death Prophet earlier, maybe it didn't come off cooldown right away, or maybe he used it to jump closer to mid lane right after anyway. So again, Havos lives by the skin of his teeth one more time. <laughs> the best way to live, man. Good to see come with me with a hand of Midas getting himself an initiating item. I know you would talking about it before with Fnatic that you require just a little bit more jumping control, like someone that can always be on the front lines, and that's what the Raid King offers. Yeah, so, so nice to have that Blink Dagger. This, this Raid King build that people do with the Blink Dagger, Blade Mill, and Maelstrom next item, it's actually really, really strong. I've, I've tried to personally deal against it with BKBs, and it honestly doesn't work because he just comes back for round two. And Blade Mill's cooldown is so short that it allows to be cast multiple times in fights, depending on the situation. And of course, Maelstrom procs are Maelstrom procs. It's game winning or even without the procs itself, it's still a decent item, so. And you're able to pull off that much DPS from just a support role because he, he got space after picking up the Midas. Quick time. Yeah. Well, it's one thing which this Na'Vi lineup, even with the SK as well as, uh, as well as the Skywrath Mage, the ganking really hasn't been there. Yeah, again though, like it's it's mainly because they don't really need to. Like what FNG has been doing for the last couple of minutes before this this moment of stalemate is he's just been pushing out the top lane, giving so much vision to the side of Navi that fanatic heroes for them to really respond adequately, all they can do is just come to the lane and try to push him out of there, and they really can't, right? With the four staff and the blink dagger and Boral strike allowing him to move that 600, 700 range, it's really difficult to catch this hero. FNG Arise pops pretty... his ultimate. Uh, yeah, he, he had it uh, to farm up the Ancients. The Ancients, I see, I see. No. Okay. But uh, he was he was looking around to the bottom lane, but FNG put down an Observer as well as Sentry Ward. And FNG, there's your oh, FNG, and with the Chris Swarm and Silence arise, there'll be a Yule Center from A to keep Denny out of here. He'll trigger the BKB so he can look, <laughs> chase something. I think yeah, he was, that, I think was, was more worried about BKB the uh, follow up coming out from everybody else. FNG, they Blade Mel, Honey Claps. <laughs> they can't do anything to this Sand King. This is, this is ridiculous. He's for them. got Fire Strike, Four Staff, and Blink Dagger. So he, oh, Ace. Oh man, Ace has his own Blink, well. and he didn't get the, the Ice Pot in the right target. Though, just using the Sandstorm Envis to get away to safety. While Denny's Exorcism trying to bring down this Tier Two tower. It's got Fortification available. Arise will actually TP himself in, but it's already too late. Denny TP'd himself out, and Avorce is pushing out the top lane. He's getting close to a heart as well after picking, finishing up that Manta. FNG finally gets caught. <laughs> Getting too brave. The yeah, Ace actually made a mistake there, I think. Because he went up the hill and instead of uh, waiting to use Scepter to target an Ice Path follow up, he tried to Ice Path up the hill first when he. Well, he had vision from the ward, but oh, it, it's it a wasn't. Trap. You know. It's a trap, honey. Not a trap triggered the way I thought it was going to be triggered. <laughs>
it could have been a blink ravage, I, I feel. Yeah. Or even with the four staff there. Yeah, yeah that, but... that's what I was looking for. I was looking for them to actually pounce on him before he got near the tier 3 tower to bounce him in this area here. Because you could have just had the blink in from one way, the movement in from the other, and then it's just Nanny Major just turns himself around. So all three of them could have converged on the point. Mm -hmm. That was... That was a good potential, and again, I, I do feel also that it should have happened, but it's it's okay to not do it. It's just one of those things that if the opportunity doesn't get seized on that moment, the next one will come, and potentially it might be of, of a bigger impact or even better. So, funny, looking to have those multiple man ravages while the enemy still free farms without without hindrance, so everything is a-okay. I also like uh, Havost's item choice. I think throughout ESL 2, we've been seeing the rise of Animage and, and the different items that the hero can really go. We've seen BKBs, we've seen Abyssals, and of course Abyssal is kind of a critical item for him, but like as a third item, people would build Butterflies over the heart. I still feel that this hero's ability to just burn mana in the team fights with his mana style illusions, it, you really want to abuse it with the Heart of Thrust. Yeah. Oh, honey, there's a man of style now being triggered off of Horse. Took us under properly here, no BKB to protect him. And the Yule set her up, funny. Oh, oh, he got out! again. He blinks down Ew. the arrow. Rise try and chase him. The Starfall is too far out of range of Horse. The secondary blink is available. He's into the trees. The silence over on Rise. He's trying to escape, but the Crimson Swarm basic attack from Denny will get the kill. The other heroes from Fnatic already bailed themselves out. And that is now for the third time Horse lives by the skin of his teeth. Yeah. And look this at the is... heart regeneration kick in. He's ready to fight again straight away. Yeah. That item, it's the perfect enemy mage item, honestly. Guys, Illusion Heroes just benefit so much from that 1100 life point boost as well as that <laughs> passive region. It's what is fantastic. This what? What oh, is they need this? to break some trees here. <laughs> it's just a really unusual position. Hey, there guys. it is. They broke the trees. There you go. They just broke it with a four staff. Yep. I want to I wanna see the vid- Okay, they the, the, the fucked up again Neither to break another set of trees. Make the ward work, Spartan not the environment. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, whether it's good or bad, I, I won't judge, but they made it work in the end. That that ward is never going to get countered, by the way. <laughs> you can watch the replay all you want, you'll never counter that ward. That vision of the ward? Okay, it stretches up to here. Uh, yeah. That's, wait! Whoa! Hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, come on. Uh, yeah, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> It's pretty decent. It, it got stuck. My, my, my scribbly tool got stuck. Look at that. FNG is a brilliant master. Look, look at that. He, they tried to drop a sentry on the, on the common hill there beside the tier 2. That's not going to counter that. I feel like FNG's uh, movements... I don't know. It's, SK is, is quickly becoming my new favorite support hero next to Rubik to watch being played. Just because, like, the timing, ever since they changed the way the Invis works in the Sandstorm, like, that extra delay time to, like, jump in, jump out. See, it's, like, the Duke ability of this hero is just yeah. so high. And then you get something like a Four Staff and a Blink Dagger on this hero. Like, the range of initiation. I remember that was always, like, the old thing of a Sand King, which was like, man, Sand King is, like, one of the greatest heroes. Because, for example, here in the middle lane, you got a Sand King here, you blink yourself to here, you can force yourself to here, and then you got a Burrow Strike to get yourself to here. So you've got yourself a range initiation that basically travels from this area to this area, and it all happens within the space of like half a second. I bet you're really good at Draw My Thing, by the way. Well, Have what? you ever played that? Oh, you... you <laughs> yeah, you, OMG you pop that thing you play you online should, you where it it's try, like, it's like this, sure this is the word, the so score. it's like, what, 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 what is this? Like this? Hang on, I'm gonna draw in the pit. What is this? That's that's a house, but come on. Boom! You know, I can do that. It's a house, baby! Easy. Yeah. Uh, oh, Roshan is being done with the tier 3 towers being taken out in the top lane. Meanwhile, in the middle lane, Funny gets FNG is being initiated on by Ace, and FNG will still die right now to the Chikira's tick out. Harney's back inside the pit. Danny will trigger the BKB out here, and Harney, he's gonna go down right now to that ultimate. You've still got Havos causing troubles up on the top lane, while Danny, come with me, he's actually gonna die. He doesn't want to. He, Danny does not want to kill him off right now. The slow will hurt him too much. He blinks himself away. He's gonna die of the orb. Then he's attack and the orb will kill him off here. Rise, there's a silence of bubbles, so we cannot leave some boys. Actually, still on cooldown. The urn charge from NS was trying to ensure it. Up on top of Wolf, he's taking tier 3 tower. He's taking range ranks, and he's trying to take Chikiro out. While on bottom lane, Kalmi's still on the run. We've got more orbs flying. No mana left here for NS. And the blade mail will be protecting Kalmi a little bit, but now you'll set the up. Have they got another attack? Crypt Swarm, one second. They'll miss up the hill. The Crypt Swarm held onto by Den. He's got to step that one to actually get the attack off, so he hit the target correctly. But that's going to be Roshan, not down. The, the top Rax has been ravaged by a solo AM, while Navi Guardians kept their attention elsewhere. Yeah, and ironically, the only thing that actually hasn't been used is the Ravage itself.
a really nice initiation by Fnatic, but that arrow just landing right behind the Roshan itself, right onto Funic, and he couldn't rub it off with the Kraken Shell because it was not enough damage alone. Although, uh, interestingly enough, I feel like Arrow might be able to rub off Kraken Shell alone. Because, oh, how interesting. Because it's level 3, it wasn't enough damage, but... Yeah, because entirely because it's level 3. If he leveled that up to level 4, Funic would have just removed the stun right away. <laughs> next level? Yeah, next no, level. Maybe he actually took that into game. account. I don't know. Uh, but that's brilliant. That's backdoor regeneration there, man. Dandy gonna Yule Scepter up right now, and there's Ravage! Bounces Ace the second he hits the ground, and arrives into the BKB that will not protect him from the physical DPS. Just coming out from Navi. There'll be a buyback TP in from the Razor, and of course, look at him! They bounce ready to go. Dandy, the epicenter, coming in from FNG. Harney, that was really late on that uh, on that epicenter. Something like two pulses. But Funnick up towards the high ground, gets the gush over. Kalmi jumps in, up to get an easy pick off. The Mana Boy, not enough to kill off Harney. Six life with FNG. Did he even see him there? He borrowed strike through and got the kill over on the Ursa. Ghost and protects Funnick for a moment. He'll anchor smash. He's got Gush available as well, but he'll die to the Razor as it raises attack. That's a force. Well, Razor will turn the mid tower, but he keeps just farming up the creep where finally he'll retreat himself away to safety. Yeah. And now back up. Again, with all these heroes dying on the side of Navi, even though Fnatic got the better end of the exchange, at this point there's just certain heroes like Razor, no matter how much farm they have, they actually can't do anything to an enemy mage. Razor is a teamfight specialist who, who can push towers entirely because of his Aghanim Scepter and possibly Refresher. That just does too much damage over time in a situation, and enemy mage is just one of those heroes that chooses the fights whenever he wants to, and he can just dodge them as he pleases as well. So, so long as he just keeps pushing in the lanes, heroes like Razor and Ursa, they just get directly hard countered. So, mm -hmm. this game, it really does boil down a lot to the draft, and it forces Fnatic to have absolute perfect execution but not only that it also required navi to make a ton of mistakes for them to really grasp the game completely and as it stands with tier twos even remaining at this point i don't think they have too much of a chance against this enemy any further it's going to take a like a long a long trail of work here for Fnatic to get back on top. Um, yeah. While we have ourselves a moment, while the teams are uh, out farming it up, uh, get yourself over onto your, so onto your social networks: uh, Facebook, Twitter, VK, whatever else you use, be it uh, Carrier Pigeon, whatever. Get your get your, get it out there and let everyone know we're currently live with Navi vs Fnatic. This is game number one of the best of three winners bracket semifinal. The winner of this will play up against Power Rangers, and the winner of that best of three will travel to Dreamhack Bucharest in two weeks' time to play in the D2CL land finals. So definitely let, let everyone know there's now. Looks like they didn't wait that long. Navi's already attacking and look where Avorst went to. The second they breach the mid, he goes for the top melee rags. And Fnatic, either they ever notice this or they just know they cannot contest it. They've been T3 counts going down. Harney's the BKB form. Now Avorst, there's multiple versions of him who's half his life points really quickly. But then Ultimate from Arise doing some heavy lifting over on Danny, but he drops low, triggers the cheat so he can come back into the engagement. Come with me, there's your Ravage. Fnatic, they got one foot in the grave, one from actually being picked back out of that grave, which is the Rage King reincarnation. Send him up and towards the air. There's been Anchor Smash into the Crypt Swarm, into the Silence, Fire Strike follow up. They want this Rage King gone. Harney jumped back in again. He got a bash over on a boss. They forced off a boss back down again. He has the Aegis Sim also. Even if he dies right now, this doesn't stop the Navi push. In fact, I don't think Anthony can really stop the Navi push. Even Rise being sold up, and there it is. Harney will realize it too. They call the GG out here. Disconnection is out rather early. Of course, that forces the automatic pause. But uh, game number one, it's going to go the way here of Navi. Solid performance in, in game number one. Solid draft and really just... Like, they, they, they just didn't take any major risks in this game. Yeah. They didn't play like... Um, I mean, it's weird to say it this way, but they didn't feel like... It didn't feel like they played traditional Navi style where they were just constantly aggressive around. Even Havol is just now in that fight uh, he was playing objective gaming, just hitting the racks and buildings while the rest of his teammates were diving.